Welcome back guys, Dalton Smith from MPI Productions and today I have forgotten my t-shirt so I'm going to be holding this very tiny mic. Uh, we're going to be talking about paddling out on your slide handboard at three different kinds of brakes. We're going to do beach brakes, reef brakes, and then either a pier or an inlet. So right behind me, we have a beach break. We're here in Indy Atlantic and it's mostly all beach breaks and what that means is it's sand, sand bottom, breaks pr pretty close to the beach, really shallow water. It's pretty easy paddle out really close to shore. You're going to see a lot of barrels, so, you know, it's not necessarily uh, the best learning for everybody. If it's a really big, crunchy day, you might want to go find something a little bit uh, softer. So, what we're going to do is take you guys to each spot and then show you how to properly approach paddling out. So, stop one, beach breaks. I'm going to come up to the beach, visualize what I've got. Today is pretty small, but you still don't want to get blasted by the first set that rolls through. So, Got some little waves coming through right now. I might start to walk down to the water, get in about knee deep water, and then wait for the last wave. Once the last wave comes through, start to make your way out. It's better to wait for the set to come through before you go out instead of paddling through it. Same thing applies to the other brakes as well. So, as you can see, I've got a little set coming through right now. Not exactly the best time to go out. So, we'll wait for it. Got the white water rolling through. And if you look behind this white water, there's no waves behind it. So, this is a good time to paddle out. So when I get up to the water, I'm going to put my fins on when I'm right by the water and I'm going to walk backwards so I'm not tripping on my fins. Watch our old videos to see all the different tips about not falling with your fins. And then honestly, this is the easiest place in the world to paddle out. It's 30 feet off the beach. Once you get in the water and you're in waist deep water, start to swim and you're out there. So for anyone that missed our duck dive section, um, basically going under a wave is a duck dive. I don't know. Apparently ducks dive under waves somewhere. So. When you're sitting out in the lineup at a beach break, you're more than likely going to have a very big, steep, pitchy wave. It's not going to exactly be the most friendly thing in the world. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're learning, an uh, eight foot day at the wedge in Newport is not necessarily <laughs> learning conditions. So pay attention to the swell size. And then if you're unsure, ask some people in that area, you know, what's the bottom look like? Is this a beach break? Is this a reef break? And go from there. That being said, on small days, beach breaks are probably your best bet as a learner. And I say that because a reef break, you can hit the bottom and get cut. A pier or an inlet, same thing. You can kind of get yourself sucked under it, and there's all these other things you have to be aware of. So if you are learning to body surf, I would recommend starting at a beach break on a small day. So, um, you know, you have to play it by ear whenever you see a different spot because they all break differently. So. Things to remember about a beach break, usually close to shore, usually very shallow. Nine out of 10 times is gonna have a sand bottom, which is a good thing, because it's safer than rock or reef. And you're gonna see some big old crunchy barrels. And uh, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, we just drove from Indy Atlantic Beach up to the Cocoa Beach Pier. So behind me, Cocoa Beach Pier. This is basically kind of like a beach break because it's got sand bottom and it's pretty close to the beach, but the pier affects the shape of the wave a lot. So that can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. When it gets really big, a lot of people will go to piers. And the reasoning is because that pier is going to act as a barrier that will break the wave apart. So. Today's not going to have this particular thing I'm about to tell you about, but when it's big, there's this thing called the conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt basically is when the water's rushing back out. If you stay, I don't know, 15 feet in, you know, or, or closer to the pier, there's water just rushing out. And it's a really easy way for you to get out quickly. But it's also kind of dangerous and scary. If people get caught in that and they're not ready for it, it's you know, a little bit nerve-wracking to have you just ripped out past the pier. So today is relatively small and we're just going to go, I think, either on the south side of the pier or maybe end up in the north side. Depends on what the waves look like. But we're going to gauge how far out it is and then we're going to look around. Another thing to keep in mind is that piers are a house, uh, basically, for fish, sharks, uh, stingrays, you name it. So be careful, drag your feet when you're walking, and just kind of be observant and see what else is out in the water with you. When you're body surfing at a pier or an inlet, you want to be really cautious about how close you're actually getting to that structure. So if I'm surfing on the south side of the pier and I go left away from the pier, you know, that'll put me in a position where I'm not going to hit it. But if I go right and I'm going into the pier, I've eventually got to stop or I'm going to slam into the pier and it's covered in barnacles and you can get seriously hurt. So you need to be careful and um, I've never personally seen anybody shoot the pier 
body surfing, but it may be possible. And to shoot the pier literally means to ride a wave through the pier. So um, definitely don't try that unless you're super confident. And I would say an advanced rider. Um, today, I'm going to ride the Bula. Again, same board that we were riding in the uh, beach break video. And when you're sitting next to the pier, depending on the day, there can be drift either to the north or south, whatever. If the water is moving in the direction of that pier, you need to be careful because if you're, you know, basically uh, downwind of the pier, it'll blow you into it eventually. So you need to be able to say, yes, I can, you know, catch a wave in or get out of the way or go past the pier, whatever you need to do to not get stuck in the pier. Because getting caught in the middle of those pilings uh, during a big swell, it's seriously scary. So be aware of that, be aware of the water, the animals, fishermen especially, those guys that are casting the lines in right next to the pier. So all these different factors play a role when you're at either an inlet or a pier or a jetty or what have you. Um, I would say that you're gonna have usually more people when you go to inlets and piers. Cocoa Beach Pier is like one of the most crowded spots there is in this area. Uh, so be aware of all these things and you know, just kind of look around when you're doing stuff and you'll have fun. Another thing to remember at piers or inlets or jetties, whatever, is that they can have different rules for how close you can be to the pier. Some don't allow you to be within you know, 100 feet of the pier. Some only allow you to uh, body surf or surf or swim on one side of the pier. So look for signs, be aware, and don't get yourself in the way of anybody else that is doing what they should be doing. You know, if there's a fishing side of the pier and you paddle out, you're liable to get hooked or hit by a weight. Keeping all of those things in mind, piers can be super fun, and there's a little pier wedge is what we call it, and uh, it's one of the funner ways around here if it has the right conditions. So we're gonna go out there and see what we can find. Okay guys, final stop, reef slash rock breaks. We're at the Radisson here in Satellite Beach, and it's absolutely dumping behind me on the beach. We've got a big swell, and it's basically as gnarly as it gets here on the shore. So I'm actually predicting that the rock is gonna be buried for the most part. That's something you wanna keep in mind. If you go somewhere and you don't think there's rocks, it might change, the sand could move, or vice versa. So usually when you show up here, the rocks are sticking up out of the water, but today, I have a feeling we get out there, a lot of it's gonna be buried. We're gonna have pretty much the same approach that we always do, get our fins, get our board, slowly walk down to the shore, but we're gonna be a little bit more observant when we're paddling out. We're gonna look to the north, look to the south. We're gonna see if we have any rocks sticking out. We wanna look for boils. Boils are basically bubbles of air being released from underneath the rock. And it's a little bit confusing because sometimes a big wave can barrel and capture air and let it up and it looks like a boil, but if you see it over and over in the same spot, you got a rock right there. And you need to be aware that that's going to be something that you could potentially hit while you're out there. So let's say we looked up and down the beach, we do or don't see rocks. If we do, let's say they're you know down the beach and we feel like, okay, this is a good place to paddle out. We're gonna get our fins, slowly walk down to the shoreline, and then when we're making our way out, slow, take it easy, feel with your feet, step out and feel before you commit to a step. Because the worst thing in the world is when you step and you follow through and there's a rock there and it knocks you down, you get hit by a wave, I'm telling you, go to uh, Kook Slams or uh, Kook of the Day on Instagram, you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. You don't want to make those pages. So at this point, let's say I'm out there, I'm like waist deep and the waves are breaking in front of me and I've got rocks underneath my feet. Go slowly and I'm gonna pay attention to where the waves are breaking in relation to where I'm at. You do not want to be on a super shallow rock and have a wave break on you. You need to time it with the sets. And that applies to anywhere, but this is really important. Watch the waves and wait for that break in the waves. When you've got an opening, go. Make it quick. But don't just dive in and take half of your chest off on the rocks. You need to make sure that when you keep stepping, you're not gonna have a staircase in front of you. And what I mean by that is it's not necessarily a flat rock all the way through. Sometimes there's a rock, and then you have to step up onto another rock, and then up onto another rock. In some cases, you're neck deep, you take two steps forward, and you're ankle deep. So you need to you know, really play it by ear for each spot, but more importantly, you need to play it by ear for each swell in each session, because when we get a big swell coming through, the sand is not gonna be the same. Nothing is the same out here, and it changes every single swell. Once we're in the lineup, generally speaking, you're gonna be okay. I have only hit the bottom and hit rock a couple times. There's places that you can surf or body surf and there are rock and it's not going to be as dangerous, but there's places that you don't have any business body surfing. It's, 
if you look and you see rocks sticking up out of the water and the wave is breaking right there, it's probably a horrible idea for you to try to catch a wave there. So be aware, be smart, and make the decisions on where you paddle out based on what you see. You show up at your reef break and it looks just out of control, there's rocks sticking up, go down to the beach break, find yourself somewhere that's a little bit safer. With all that being said, reef breaks can be so fun. It can be close to shore like this where it dumps right on the beach, or it can break way outside, give you these beautiful A-frames, they can barrel, they can give you, you know, air sections. There's a million different ways that these waves break, but we always have to remember that underneath the water, we've got more than sand. We've got rock and reef and a lot of stuff that can se severely injure you if you hit it. So be careful, be safe. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is our last stop. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Check out the previous videos for all of our tutorials with slide hand boards. And stay tuned. We've got some really sick new boards to show you guys in the coming weeks. Yew!